So second place is perhaps the wildest of ideas brought to you by one of our dear members, uh, Wizzy, who's been a big contributor to the community this past year. Wizzy had this idea um, that I think is a good idea if you test it. If you come from, depending on what where you come from, uh, you know, an option maybe a lot of people have come from like longer term trading. Some people have just figured it out themselves looking and then they are like, hey, I like options. Let's look up some tools. They found option omega that way. Many of you came from like the Tasty Trade Facebook group and things like that. And depending on where you came from, there's always like a flavor of the month or flavor of the week trade going on in those groups. Right. And I'll tell you, fourth place consideration, uh, you know honorable mention was tranching this year um there's tests you could show where you just put an iron condor on like every hour and that seems to work you could build out a portfolio of iron condor trades are, are there any tranchers in the room with us today Shout out to the tranchers. You could definitely tranche trade this year and had some pretty, pretty sad days. But if you could withstand it, the tests show that this past year might have worked a little bit with it. Wizzy had this idea to say, well, hey, we like Vega. We like a little bit of uh, hedging going on in our condors. What happens if we did an iron condor and a double calendar mixed together. Now, obviously, you can't do this in one trade, right? Most brokerages allow four legs at a time. But the theory is, is you, if you could get this on close enough together, it might provide an interesting trade. Uh, and it does. So we'll go to that one here. And the screen, if you can see the screen there. What this is, is you're selling three 25 delta condors, zero day, 25 delta, 25 wide. And then for every three, you're putting on one 15 delta, one two double calendar. Again, you're trading this every Monday and Wednesday. You're opening it at 935. Uh, this trade allocates 100% of the portfolio. Again, we've said this a million times. Don't ever allocate 100% of the portfolio unless you fully understand options and know what you're doing. And even then, don't do that. So never do it. It's just for testing purposes. So uh, that 100% portfolio, I always like to cap it just because it's crazy to me when I see these trades. And I'm like, hey, this thing, I'd be a zillionaire in three weeks. And you're like, well, buddy, you're putting on like 4 million SPX contracts. Like, have you looked at the option chain? You know, so I like, and maybe you could, I don't know. But I like to cap it at 100 just because I think for most people's account size and things like that, 100 is a nice little, a nice little realistic kind of like, it's a cap, but it's good. So, um, again, you said how this works is you exit at a stop loss of $5. Or if you get a profit target of five dollars, you set the stop to two and a half dollars. Pretty simple, right? And then I've got some some kind of miscellaneous, and we haven't talked about this in a while. But if you're new to Option Omega, what is the miscellaneous section? The miscellaneous is what I call the pain section. It's where you want to try to um, it's where you want to try to get the max uh, profit, or sorry, the max uh, pain. You want to make it as realistic as possible, right? And so that's what you're doing. So what is it? It's a condor and it's one, two. And um, it goes from there. Tom, Tommy still can't see me. Can everybody see me? Just, just to say, like, how many fingers am I holding up right now? Look at that. I love that. That's funny. Good. Thank you. Um, so, Tommy, sorry, I don't know what's happening with yours, but again, I'll, I'll post the video here in a little bit. Um, so this is the idea that Wizzy came up with, which is smart. It's super smart, right? Everybody's doing these condors all day long. And it's condor, why? Condors, positive theta, five-day week expirations. 
what could go wrong? Well, by adding a simple double calendar, again, a one to three ratio with this, what Lizzie showed was that adding just a little bit of vega, like a little bit of a hedge, works really well um, throughout the year. Again, not financial advice, not, not financial advice, but pretty interesting. Now, I know some of you have traded this. Has anybody attempted to trade anything to this uh, equivalent this year? And I will now let you type. And if there's a long break of silence, it's because we're lighting a uh, side note sponsored by cigars this year. We are now going to light the Asylum 13, my personal cigar of the year. So Option Omega Cigar Lounge sponsored by cigars. Um, has anyone traded the 1-2 Iron Condor this year? Double butterflies. Yep. Seen quite a few of those. How's that work for you? That's not bad. Okay, sorry. Good cigars take time to light. And here we are. We're back now. Thank you for uh, your patience. So, um, Wizzy, if I see Wizzy in the room, if you have any thoughts or anything like that, feel free to shout it out since it was largely your idea uh, posted. But, uh, again, third place, the idea of one-two. It's a new thing. One, two. Uh, it's a new thing. It's worked pretty well. I think largely the reason it's worked is because VIX has held up this year. You know, people are mad that VIX hasn't exploded, which I understand. Um, side note with the VIX thing. Uh, just, I'm no, I'm no volatility expert, but I will, I will give you a little bit of a, this is Troy's Christmas gift to you. Uh, Rusty and I talk about this all the time. Rusty, one of the partners of OO. Uh, VIX, VIX is a 30-day uh, outlook, right? 30-day options. Um, there's been a ton of research to show that a ton, a lot of volume in SPX trading uh, has. <laughs> we should talk about that in a second. That's good. Uh, a lot of volume this year to SPX has gone to zero to one day. So. Vol is in this weird time right now where the normal way that we think about vol, look at vol 30 days out, there's a transformational shift in how the market is repricing things. And so, yes, you have a 20 VIX and yes, the market moves 100 points. Why isn't, shouldn't it go to 30? Well, two things with that. A, if, any, if you've been trading options for longer than three years, VIX, a 20 VIX is insane. Like, it, I remember trading VIX at 13 and being like, oh my God. VIX got to nine, I think, in 2017, right? VIX historically will go like 12 to 18. So like a 20 VIX is elevated. Make no mistake about it. We, we are playing with fire with a 20 VIX. It's just that we've had crazy moves this year. We're down a thousand points this year and the VIX has largely been in a range, right? And this is my my little Christmas gift, you know, from my my limited knowledge about how the world works is what, what you might want to think about is not the VIX, but you might want to think about the vol of vol. And I'll leave it there. You guys can look that up. Think about not in terms of uh, implied volatility, but the volatility of volatility, because that largely will determine where vol is going in the future or why it's not moving. So anyway, look that up. Maybe we'll do a cigar lounge on that pretty soon. So that being said, Iron Condor with a sprinkle 
of uh, double calendar. Uh, Wizzy says, don't do it on Thursdays, which is largely true. To the point of like Friday, long's holding up really well. Well, if you're doing, if you're basing things on like a Friday long setup, uh, which again, we'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, Thursdays are tough because at that point your 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 longs, unless you're doing like one seven days, a one day seven day double calendar or something like that, it's not going to work really well for you. So, um, yeah. With that being said, but. To the point, this test shows only, um, I believe this test shows only Monday and Wednesday. Wizzy says you can trade it um, up to four days a week and test that and it will work pretty well for you. So you have the test now. Feel free to do it. Shout out to Wizzy. Now, here we go. Trade of the year. This is going to make people mad. This is... This is and all. This is why ESPN does these lists all the time. So the point's not necessarily to show who's the best. The point is to piss everybody off into talking about it and making points about it and bringing their their stuff to it. So that's all this is too. This is just a pure, just a pure like content boy. All it is. But these are my favorites too. So I, I say that with a grain of salt. But with that being said, I'm gonna light this one more time. Drum roll in your head because I have no music. Drum roll while we get ready for the first one. First place. Okay, thank you. I'll be in a few minutes. Thank you. All right, excellent. Excellent. Okay, bye. I just dropped my cigar onto my new thing and burnt a hole in it. My wife is not going to be happy. Okay, first place. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. If you look in the chat window, you will now see the trade of the year. The option Omega trade of the year. Why was this presented as the trade of the year? A couple reasons. First off, I wanted to show a couple different ideas in these top three. And I think we've done that. Number three, one, two, these trades, short-term trades, kind of set it and forget it. It's time-based and not necessarily stop-loss based. Works pretty well, backward looking. That's what we've shown this year using Option Omega. A one-two trade, um, honestly, uh, you know, I talk to a lot of option traders. I talk to a lot of option educators and what I do every day. And a lot of them were really, really surprised to find that one, two working. And part of that is because most option traders up until this year didn't, the zero day was like for, for um, gamblers and there were no one days. So now we started, I think what third place has shown us is that, hey, maybe there's different ways to play these short term trades that aren't just like YOLOing or selling one Delta iron condors. And that's been pretty cool to show. Second place was this idea of saying, okay, but if, say you are doing an iron condor and you're getting whipsawed back and forth all year long because of these crazy price moves while vol's not vol elevated as we, much as we want it to be. So we're not getting as much premium for these one deltas as we think we sh should or we think price is, is showing for it. Well, what Wizzy showed in second place finish was you could still sell premium and maybe add a little bit of Vega to it and that could work. And it has worked for many of you. So what is this first place showing us? This first place is showing us that a, a simple strategy that is a kind of a patience strategy that is in that intermediary time between zero day and 30 day, which is kind of like the classic options thing, works really well. And again, it's based on this kind of cyclical nature this year of the way longs have worked on Fridays. And so what this is, is every Friday at the end of the day, we are taking, uh, selling the Thursday 20 Delta Strangle, and we're buying the same strikes of the seven day, making it a double calendar. And we do this at the end of the day on Friday. We set them. Uh, again, this is a 100% portfolio with a very small amount of capital just to show you. 
don't ever trade 100 percent of your capital on any one trade um and so what this has shown is that starting with a small amount of capital this trade has worked really really well this past year you're putting on at the end of the day every friday selling the six day thursday next thursday 20 delta strangle buying the same strikes for that friday again capping it at 100 contracts per trade and your profit the only exit condition is you're going to exit the trade at 10 a.m on the days the short expire that's the that's the only caveat or you're taking 50 percent now you think about all the variables in that all the variables that you could no doubt and i promise you are there you can make this perhaps more profitable and with a with a smaller drawdown uh, the miscellaneous, the pain factor, opening and closing fees, $1.25, cap the profits, require two profit price targets. If the profit target was making it realistic as possible. And this has worked pretty well. You win 87% of the time, a max drawdown of 23%, with, and a MAR ratio of 555. Let me share the link for you. No doubt, no doubt, my friends, there are better trades. But I think for showing different ideas and how this market has worked this past year, these are pretty good trades of the year. Has anyone done a 6-7? Has anyone sold the Thursday, bought the Fridays this year? How's it gone for you, Dadalus? I admittedly have done this trade a lot. I love this trade. Uh, and I admittedly did not do it this week because I have some um, I have some personal thoughts about the last week of the year and how Vol does crazy things. Uh, those are my personal convictions. So I'm setting out until the beginning of the year, hanging out with kids, sledding, going to various places throughout the day looking for treats yeah some people start second week of january some people start earlier your call but my friends that's it now this is the cool thing first off we have one more thursday and i'll give some big shout outs and thanks to everybody then but i just want to say we launched in march and you guys have made this really, really fun. You know, when we when we made Option Omega, we thought it was a tool. It was honestly a tool for ourselves as option traders. We we found some good use out of it. But what's re been really, really cool is watching everyone in the Discord just be a lot smarter than us and talk through things and figure things out together. So you guys have made it a joy to run this sucker this year. So I'm very thankful for all of you. Um, and what's really, really cool about this, this is the, the fun thing about Option Omega, is yes, like the, the difference between like us and what we think other people are doing is other people are like coming up with trades of the week and flavors of the week and things like that. And no doubt we will have those. But the nice thing about the data is this is data dependent. So what will be really cool is next December, Lord willing, we're all sitting here and the top three might be like the most opposite trades you've ever seen in your life like there might not be one double calendar in that trade next year next year they might all be like you know just put spreads it might be the glory days again where everybody just loved selling put spreads of various time frames and everybody was a genius and the nice thing is if that's the case option omega will show it we'll be able to show you that and say hey this was the year of selling put spreads um I'm going to talk more about that Thursday because the macro this year has been crazy. So Thursday, what we're going to do, uh, we're winding down now. Thursday, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the look back at the macro setups of this year. 
So what was happening? And we're going to do that by looking at different time frames in Option Omega and what worked and what didn't work. Because we had a crazy year. We had we had interest rates um, exploding higher. I mean, that really is the trade of the year. That's the trade I missed was the freaking two year. Um, if I just would have bought the two years, I think, I don't know. Life might be different. <laughs> I don't know. But that was the one I missed. That was my missed trade of the year was the two years. But we're going to look at that. And we're going to look back at some different things, but I'll give you the kind of the thesis for, for that presentation is this has been the year to be short equity, short vol, short vol, short equity, which last year, if you told me that I would have been like, no way, that's crazy. Who does that? But that's been the case. VIX absolutely cannot uh, go higher so far this year. Just it proved itself not able to what it cap out at 36 um and yet uh equities are down you know spx is down a thousand points from january 12 months a thousand points vix largely where we were a year ago who would have thunk it i wouldn't have thunk it but we're going to look at some trades that would have uh kind of matched that macro strategy hindsight this it's going to be a macro hindsight fiesta so with that being said Guys, I hope you guys have a great today and tomorrow, and we'll jump back on here Thursday at 2 Eastern time and talk about that macro look and say goodbye for the rest of the year and maybe talk about some fun things we got planned for next year. So that being said, Merry Christmas to y'all. I won't say Happy New Year yet. We'll wait till Thursday, but happy Wednesday. We'll see you Thursday. Bye, guys.